Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, got a few questions that popped up and I'd like to address. First was the uh, idea of way, way, way. And how do you know when you're doing it? And how do you know when you're not? And um, we want to fine tune central equilibrium a little bit and give you some hacks for for getting into that because it's really important. It's like, you know, it's one of the pillars, one of the three pillars and, and it kind of makes everything work. Um, then uh, want to explore a little bit on, on how do we develop our Kung Fu so that we can kind of move more and more into insubstantial expressions through the substantiality. And I'll talk a little bit more about that, explain what I'm talking about. And if we have time, we got a couple other things too. So um, let's begin with that first question, which is way woo way. So the how do we know when when that's when it's happening? And um, just to explain that those two ideas again. Wu Wei is not do, literally. And it's really it's moving into that state where we're becoming more and more attuned to the state of being. And this is not something you take for granted because it's most of us are, are hardwired to get right into the doing, get right into the thinking, trying to figure stuff out. What do I do next? And and to be able to appreciate being for its own sake is quite uh, uh, extraordinary. So um, the beautiful thing about it is that it is the foundation for really the power of Taiji Chuan. If you are unable to be able to go to that quiet place, be able to go to the stillness, then you uh, have a difficult time mobilizing the chi. The chi is mobilized in that moment of stillness. So you want to get, you want to mobilize first and then do. Looking for a place where my uh, my uh, face is not being overly illuminated. So um, uh, whenever we establish that that wu wei state then from that we're then able to do so the image i like to use is a pendulum swinging back and forth and there's a moment there of stillness at the end of each run is as it goes one way or the other one side to the other at that turnaround point there's a moment of stillness and in that moment of stillness we have the maximum energy potential for the pendulum and then moves the other direction and it goes and accelerates and then starts to decelerate and as that the de deceleration approaches zero there's a point there where it heads back the other direction that point has zero duration and infinite potentiality so it's like you everything is possible in that in that moment of that turnaround place that uh, that stillness and we find that in each movement in the Taiji form, we find it many times actually within a, within a given posture. And each time we switch from yin to yang, where the attention goes from the yin to the yang, at each moment of turnaround, there is a moment of stillness. And that's an opportunity, which we don't often grab, but it's an opportunity to tap into the Wu Wei. And from that, we get the way we way. Way we way is do, not do. And that, so it's doing based in the stillness, based in that not doing. So when if you first mobilize the chi and then you express it, then your motions, your expressions have power. They have their that effortless power that comes from that. So the question is, how do we know we're doing it? And if things are flowing along nicely and you're actually feeling the stillness, 
feeling the motion, feeling, feeling the motion in the stillness, feeling the stillness in the motion, being able to play with those two concepts back and forth, to be able to recognize the yin expression, the energy coming inward and yang, the energy going outward, and being able to recognize the transition between the two. And the only way you get to that is if you can move into a super conscious state. If you can get into a state of body, mind, spirit integration, where you're able to park your, your obsessive thinking for a moment and go to that gap between thoughts, then it enables you to access that Wu Wei state. So we've talked about this over the last few weeks, so I'm not going to get into too much detail on it, but the the, it's easier to recognize when you're not in a way 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 state and usually you're you're struggling you're you're questioning doubting what am i doing wrong yeah and uh so there's you're you're, you're definitely not in that state whenever whenever that struggle is occurring so the um the solution i believe is to slow it way down Go into stillness. Just feel into your body so that you can create that, that synergy that occurs whenever body, mind, spirit come together. And then it's like, oh, then you to reclaim your your way woo way is to is to go back into the stillness and then begin moving in a slow controlled way and gradually as you acclimate to getting comfortable doing it in that way then you can get more complicated and then you can add more and more complexity to your motions and uh, so then you can play with that way so i think uh so uh does that handle that, Scott? Is that is that good for you? Good, terrific. Okay, moving on. Um, talking with Jonathan today after tennis, and we were discussing uh, central equilibrium and how it's come up that it's not as easy for some people to get to that get to that state, get to that, really get a, a strong central equilibrium. And I think um, as much as I've talked about it, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more and clarify one thing that I really want to emphasize. Because last week, I was emphasizing the importance of not pushing your butt out past your foot whenever you're making that, making one leg substantial or, or um moving so you you don't want the the butt to go lateral at all so we uh, the the nickname we have for it is jbs or jutting butt syndrome and it's from a, a very mechanical substantial perspective what it means is that if if my first motion if i'm going to take a step forward is to rock into this this my right leg here and by doing it by by just shifting my weight and pushing my butt out to the side to make a step forward, I can make that step, but I'm not rooted in that in that situation. I'm floating. And reason why is because I am not sung qua. So that's we want we need that that qua to be released in order to unkink the hose and allow the torso and the leg to, to function together. So if I'm rocked into here, I cannot release my, my hip bone. The muscles that are supporting it need to be engaged. They need to be tight in order to be able to prevent me from falling over. So consequently, I cannot achieve Sun Kwa whenever, whenever I do that. So the key here is how do I get my weight into my right leg and be able to make that that step without um, 
pushing my butt out. And that is to feel the ball of the foot, set the knee and spiral down and then turn. And so notice that my butt did not go out. It just spiraled. And that enables me to then step forward under control because this leg is then, I'm able to get Sun Quan and, and so my root is well established. There is no jutting butt syndrome. If I try to do that, if I push my butt out and then try to get some claw, I'm just going to throw everything off. So the uh, one of the problems that I see happening, probably in about half of the people I work on as a uh, as a polarity therapist, is that there is a pelvic imbalance in some way, and it's usually because of the way people stand over, over a lifetime. Very few people stand with their weight evenly distributed between their feet, unless they're consciously doing it. And it, for, but for most people, there's a, there's a tendency to, to rock to one side or the other, or there's a tendency to, to lock your knees and then, and then jut your butt out so that the pelvic is rocked forward. Those are the, the, the most common. There's also a, a uh, posterior tilt with the pelvis, but you don't see that quite as often. Mostly it's, it's there's a uh, pronounced uh, lower back curve that pushes the butt out and there's, or there's, it butt is pushed one side or the other, basically JBS. So the, the hack that, you know, I, I, I came across to, um, to do this, um, why don't you uh, stand up and we'll uh, we'll go through this because the key here is to remember that despite all this this information I'm giving you about the physical side of central equilibrium, the substantial side, what is more important is learning to identify the insubstantial feeling that comes with being in central equilibrium, Zhong Ding. So the, and so if you look at it, you think of it as, when I say, don't push your butt out, don't know JBS, I am just drawing a map there. That is not central equilibrium. That is just it's like, okay, look over here and, and you know, there's gold buried in that, in this spot. And I'm just pointing to a spot. I'm not really giving you the gold. The gold you have to find, you gotta dig for it. And that comes from aligning your body and getting the feeling. And so if you just stand, so feel the balls of your feet and release your knees. And um, so if, you find that you have your weight slightly tilted to one side or the other. You, you might not be able to notice it right now by looking at me, but I have my right hip is locked up because I have more weight in my right leg than my left. And now I'm gonna take it into the left leg. And even though it looks pretty normal, it, there is definitely a locking up that occurs. So if you're finding that your hips are locked up either side, there's a good chance that you are loaded more in that side than the other. So the hack that, that, that I came up with is if you do have one leg that is more tense, more um, loaded up than the other, then let's say uh, your right leg. So if you just bring your weight just slightly to the left, so we start off like the first move where we're stepping out to the side, right? We're, we're gonna do that. We begin that we, with the weight 50-50. We wanna have feel the balls of both feet. Well, when you do that, kind of just shade just a slight bit to the left so that we know that we're gonna be activating the right leg, but so just for, just to let the right leg go so that you can that you can actually use it. 
you can actually do stuff with it. You can release the hip joint. You load up the left leg just slightly. And then you feel the ball of the right foot. And set the right knee and, and then you start to load that up and find that place. There's a quiet place right in the center there that when you get into that place, your mind clears and the energy just rushes through. You open the gate between heaven and earth and you allow, connect up to the big chi. So just for our purposes right now, you're gonna be looking for that place. So just bring your weight a little more to the left and just feel into that and then, and then feel the ball, the right foot without shifting any weight into it. And then look for that spot. And the, it's counterintuitive because it will be the spot where you feel the most vulnerable, is where you feel the most precarious. And paradoxically, it is a place where you are at your peak of root, of energy, of internal power. But it feels vulnerable. It feels precarious. So just, and then now bring your weight and just put your weight a little more into the right foot without dramatically shifting your position at all. And just feel into that and then feel the ball of your left foot. And then find your center equilibrium there. This is a quiet meditation, but notice it has the effect, a very powerful effect of a meditation as you do it. Your mind clears, you get to the gap between thoughts very quickly, whenever you find that spot. So it's not just because, not just that it gives you more effective power that increases your root, it increases your energy, but it also clears your mind and allows you to feel into that super conscious state. Now take your, into your, feel your left foot and just kind of shift even more into that and just notice what that does to the, your, your energy, what it does to your mind whenever you really rock to the side and just, and then feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, and start to load up the right foot and spiraling down to the left as you do that. And just feel into that. And find your center equilibrium. Notice that spot. There's a place where the water runs clear. And then turn. And as you turn, still feel your energetic coherence, still feel your central equilibrium, still feel the weight on the inside of your foot. Feel that ball of the left foot, or the right foot, I'm sorry. Feel the ball of the right foot as you do that. And you want to be able to just release into that, just really feel sung in that right leg so that you can pick up the left heel effortlessly because you really feel relaxed into that. Now step forward with your left foot and feel the ball of the left foot and push your left knee forward. So now we're gonna be looking for central equilibrium in a bow stance. So allow your weight to go just a little bit into your back foot so that you can release the, your, the, the front claw, your left claw. And then feel the ball, set the knee, but feel the leg is kind of empty. So we're going to 
release down, spiral down to the left now, and we start to load it up. But we're loading it up after it's been emptied out. So even though we we had the weight, we had the, the left leg forward, it's not loaded. It we still supporting from the from the right leg. And we want to feel into that and turn back to center and find that same quiet place of central equilibrium there. Find that, that sweet spot where the water runs clear. And feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, good, and then spiral down and start to load up the right leg now. Find that quiet spot there. If you can't, then go back into the left leg a bit, empty out the right, and then feel the ball. Set the knee, and then ah, spiral down again. Just release down and step back with the left foot. And just bring, raise the heel of the left foot. So you're just lightly on the toe. So now we're finding central equilibrium in the right foot, the right leg but in a primarily single-weighted stance. We have about 95 to 99% of the weight in the right leg now. And we're looking for that sweet spot. We're looking for that quiet place of, of connection, of emptiness that paradoxical, powerful emptiness. Okay, so then step up. And find your center equilibrium with your feet parallel. Bring your weight a little more to the left. more to the right and find the place where it, the pendulum stops, where it just, there you are, dead center. And you feel that connection. It's like now your body is a conduit for the energy, the energy of the heavens cascading down through and out through your feet, the energy of the earth coming up and out to the top of your head. and feel it radiating in all directions. Take a deep breath, breathe, inhale, and exhale, and disappear the cheek, dissolve it. Okay, grab a seat. Let's uh, let me see if there's any questions that people have on uh, on this or any thoughts, challenges. Rick. Well, it was it was it was alternating between the quiet and the body just going crazy with all this energy flowing in. I mean, just standing there. Just last week, I was saying I was having a, a, a trouble finding that original uh, sweetness of the feeling of. Uh, body turning into concrete. Well, today it was just concrete was pouring through all the, through all the limbs. And it was kind of like, I'm going quiet down, quiet down, <laughs> trying to find the quiet place. And the quiet place came to me uh, with, with a great deal of joy. It was, it was also hard to keep my face relaxed because it was just so joyful. So Bravo. I, I was, yeah, 
Well, oh, yes. I agree. Thank I, I like the joy part. You. That's Thank great. You. <laughs> yeah. Terrific. You. you bet. Uh, anybody else? How'd that go? Anybody have any challenges? Any questions? Jonathan. The uh, big toe being such an important part, I think, now to recall and bring in. Uh, I keep, anytime I can bring it back into play, I seem to be able to better overcome JBS. So it just, it just seems so essential to me to press down a bit on that toe. The big Talk toe. a little bit about that, please. That uh, the foot becomes, we're standing on our feet when we're, you know, we're, that's the foundation of what our whole weight is dropping into. And your what's going to happen is only as good as your foundation is. And when you say the ball of the foot, it's, you know, it's not what generally people think of the ball of the foot. It's a specific area kind of below where the big toe is. So zeroing in exactly at that point to me is right there. Right, right there. Right there. And it's amazing how often just by bringing my awareness to that, to my big toe, because I mean, that's buried in there, that point. It's accessible to us now, and we know it's there. It, you've given us the key to unlock it. But the key can, in some ways, is the big toe, because the big toe, we can all wiggle our big toes a little bit. So it's the most accessible manifest way to know we're, we're there. You know, we're in the neighborhood there. So just by pressing, and, and that's a lot of doing in, in a way, but talk about a way, woo way there. It's not all that much to do. It's not much more than pointing. It's very similar in some ways, but just like we have to like point all the time, not just once and then do the form. It's like, we have to keep checking in, I think with our big toe. Great point. Um, yeah, to try it right now, just with your feet on the floor, just press down with your big toes and just feel into your body and notice that you get you get a little thrill there whenever right. <laughs> just just by just by doing that just by feeling you the big toe so that's uh, thank you for bringing that up that's that's an excellent point cool anybody else all good keith keith says what he says no he says jazz hands hey dude <laughs> In the biz world, when you raise your hand like this, that's meant you have biz? a question. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. I love you, cuz. Hey, you know what? Rebooting does wonders. Okay. So my question was, and this is strictly from a positional stance. I am so new to this that I am only imitating trying to feel it. But I noticed versus your feet and your initial stance being parallel, they're at 45s with your heels close to be touching. I got to tell you, it's, a, it's a, a much more uncomfortable position. But as we were going through the movement, which I loved, that really kind of really was useful to me. So it's more of an observation. So cool. that's Thank it. You. Great, thank you. Cool. Anybody else? Okay. So anyway, so that's a that's something to explore. Uh, you know, all day, every day, just center equilibrium. Try how to find it, and to also notice whenever you are locking up your hip on your weight bearing leg, and to say, oh, okay, just notice that. Notice whenever you're standing with your weight kind of parked on one one leg and with the with the hip out and just just become aware of that and and then gradually see if you want to modify that behavior because it's um, that is the one of the foundational elements of of this this practice is is getting your three pillars in it's like it's one of the three pillars and it's it's, it's really crucial and it permits so many other things to happen. Particularly if you are wanting more, you know, I'd like to 
talk a little bit about that, about wanting more, about wanting, you know, the, the, the superpowers. And it's not something that all of us want. And, and many of us are very content with just Taiji Tran as a, as a healthy practice and, or as a meditation or whatever. But I believe that as a part of the process, it, it leads you, if you're doing it correctly, it leads you along in a way that you start discovering these things that are uh, not ordinary. And when you get comfortable with them, then you reestablish your foundation at a different level of being. And then the next level reaches out to you and says, come on, check this out. And you start to look at that. So when I'm talking about the superpowers, a few weeks ago, I talked about, uh, you know, getting that experience with, uh, with Wei Sin Liao, where he just puts his fingers, just touches my chest very lightly and boom, I go, I go slamming into a wall behind me. It's like, wow. He said, oh yeah, this is Pong Jin. Let me demonstrate Pong Jin. So, you know, and we, for the last few weeks, we've been doing Pong, you know, in a much more substantial way, but at the same time, she, making a distinction between the Pong, the ward off form and the Pong Jin that animates it because we can find Pong Jin that up and out energy, that expression of up and out energy, we can find that in all kinds of different shapes. It's a direction of, of where we are, our mind is taking the energy. So getting that, that awareness, that awareness of the insubstantiality and slowly shifting our home base from the very substantial most of us, when we start this practice, we're starting at a level of, of substantiality, at least as regards to Taiji Tuan. That is, we learn these movements, which are very substantial, and we try to get them right. We learn how to move properly, and we learn how to do cool stuff without falling over and things like that. And, and gradually, we shift from 80% physical to start to shift it to 50-50, like 50% 50 physical, 50% 50 energy. And things start, ooh, there's something different happens there. And then uh, take it up, 60% energy, 40% physical. Ooh, this is even better. And then take it up more and more and more until it's like 80% energy. And it's like, oh, okay. Then a new door opens and that's where Shen comes in, spirit. It's like, oh, okay. Now we're playing with a whole different thing. We've added a, a third category to it. And that is, that occurs whenever body, mind are integrated in such a way that it awakens the ability to operate from a state of wholeness where we can access that way, woo way, that stillness, that super consciousness that allows us to do even more cool stuff. So whether or not you want to kick ass and take names with this stuff, that's entirely up to you. It, there is an advantage, I believe, uh, in your evolution in your own life of a spiritual evolution that comes with body, mind, spirit integration that as we move in that direction where we're operating more and more from a super conscious state, we are starting to identify with the insubstantial more, starting to identify with spirit. And so there is this nice balance in our lives between the energy, the body and you as spirit. And so that, that's cool. So, but we get there by first really mastering the physical part, getting it so that we, we can actually feel what's going on and getting out of our own way. 
And, you know, a lot of what uh, Kung Fu is about is changing your, your body mind in such a way that you can handle all this new energy and information that's coming in. If you do not take the steps, if you do not do the practice, then you're just not going to be available for the gifts whenever they, they come in. Whenever, you know, oh, it's time for your upgrade, Rick. Oh, but I haven't practiced. Oh, well, okay, we'll be back. You know, you practice a little more and then we'll get, uh, we'll, we'll come back and give you some more, uh, some more goodies later. But if, you know, even if you are, you got it staring you in the face, you won't be able to reach for it if you have not done the work, if you haven't, you know, explored. So you get, and each of us finds our own level of what we want to experience, what we, how deep we want to take this thing. I believe that it's one practice, Taiji Chuan, and internal martial arts in general, is a practice that is self-fulfilling. It, uh, it, you do it and you get more and more and more and more, more health, more longevity, more mental acuity, more vitality. And so you do it and you invest in this and it keeps getting better. So, uh, but also part of the contract is not just doing the same thing you did 10 years ago, but to actually reach for the next rung on the ladder because that's the direction it is leading you. And as you move toward more and more insubstantiality. So having said that, let me just show you uh, something I, I thought of this week in terms of getting feedback, particularly in times where we're, a lot of us are not meeting the way we, way we once were. And um, how do we get feedback to, um, for some things. So in this one, let's just focus on what we've been talking about the last few weeks, which is uh, Peng Jin and learning how to get the physical part of that, the substantial part of that, and integrate that with the energy part of that, which then leads into the Shen part, the ability to, to direct that. So um, what I have here is a resistance band. And it's not a very heavy one. I don't know what the uh, what the uh, the weight is, but it's uh, it's kind of green and uh, it's not heavy. So uh, you want to keep it fairly light. And uh, the idea here, we're going to be doing some ward off. So this is one way of 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 practicing that. And uh, we'll let me talk as I, as I as I do that. So if I I set this up okay, and so if I were to go into a, a like the part of the ward off posture here, and I am like this, I feel the ball of my foot, set my knee, sung kwa. I reach with my elbows, reach with, reach my index finger, feel that energetic coherence throughout the whole system here. And as I activate and turn, I'm going to reach with my wrist, still reaching with my elbow, opening the shoulder joint, reaching that. And what else am I doing? I'm pulling back with my right hand. So we talked before about the emphasis on the yin hand. So the, the right hand is the yin hand here. The left hand is the yang. So it's the yang hand is going up and out. The yin is down and in. And both elbows are reaching. And what I'm feeling in my whole system here is a, a continuity. I'm feeling the tensegrity of my whole system. And also I get to notice where I'm kinking the hose. So I'm gonna do it wrong, just give you an idea here. So if I come out and just reach out like that. And what I'm feeling here is tension in my shoulder. My shoulder is working very hard. And even my right hand is, is 
my right shoulder is having to work hard it's because there's a disconnection here. So there's a way of checking like, oh, where am I feeling? Where am I feeling it? I'm definitely not feeling it in my feet. So I let that go and I'm gonna try it again and I'm gonna do it wrong a different way. So I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna reach out like this. And, oh, that doesn't feel good either. There's, there's, there's a tension there. So, oh, okay, do it again. So I'm gonna reach with my elbow, reach with my wrist, reach with both elbows and gradually expand, opening. And now there's a continuous pressure throughout the whole system. I'm feeling the pressure of the resistance band on the whole system, but it's distributed all the way through my body and through my feet. When that happens, then I get a, I have this sense of continuity, a sense of wholeness. And with that, there is a, an expression, a sense of fullness. The energy is very full. It's very expansive. And so there's a, the, my body mind has a, it's able to, um, to sense that. So if I go into that without the resistance band, I have a memory of that. So that whenever I'm reaching and there is no resistance, but it doesn't matter because I'm feeling the, I'm meeting the air, I'm meeting the space and I'm able to sense the energy circulating throughout the whole system. Rick, I mean, it's a, a hack that, uh, that people can, uh, can use. What's that? Richard, a question? Yeah, Richard. Okay, in this move that you just did. Yes. You have with your left leg, spiraled to the right and turned back to the left. Yes. Okay, that's it. Boom, boom. Okay, so that's just, um, it's one way of doing it. And, but the key here, and I, I deliberately didn't put too much emphasis on what's going on down below here, even though it's, as we noted before, your central equilibrium is really vital to that. Your sung qua is very vital to that. If I'm doing it and I'm pushing my butt out to the side, I got nothing. But if I, oh, like this. So then I go and I say, okay, what else? Where else am I kinking the hose? That little bit of pressure that I get from the resistance band lets me know where the weak spots are, where the tense spots are, where, where the, the kinks in the hose are. And then I can let that go and do it again. And find how to do it, find the right way. So uh, uh, anybody have any thoughts on that, questions? Scott. Um, I'm assuming, so I'm assuming that when you've, you know, when you've got it correct, it should be fairly easy to actually stretch the band, right? Don't worry about that. That's, uh, don't think of it in terms of, of, of the, of the effect that you're creating. It's more about learning the internal state, the internal connections. Because um, what can happen is that you can, or you can worry, work on creating the effect and, and get the wrong, uh, you can create a, a big effect with the wrong technique. And, uh, it's not what we're looking for. It's just there to give you feedback. And well, I just, uh, I just assume that I just assume that if you're doing it right, it would stretch easily, and that would be the feedback that you're doing it right. If you do, if you're doing it without muscular force, and your shoulders don't hurt while you're doing it, or any, you know. But if you uh, think that's, uh, I, I would, I would say it's more about the your muscles not hurting, your joints not hurting. And, and uh, because resistance bands are 
they're designed to they're like rubber bands they you, they they stretch out they stretch back so it's uh you're going to reach the the end point of it anyway so it's uh you will you will be more powerful but it, that's um uh, i think if you I, I prefer you look at it from the internal rather than the external effect and um uh supporting good store i mean i know my physical therapist has them but... yeah uh, I would imagine. I, I'm sure you, you can find them, on, find them online easily. You know, I just look for resistance bands. I got this from a physical therapist, you know, and say, oh, OK, that's, uh, you know, they, they, they got those. Uh, they got the different. He says Amazon, the answer to everything. Any questions? Yes. Where, where can I get it. that? You know, so the yeah. can't have my money. <laughs> so uh, um, so anyway, that, I think that's a that's a pretty cool tool that we can uh, we can all use for um, for for training, and then you can do it for other moves as well. So let's say you know if I want to I want to do something where there's a um, like a splitting energy, right? So I'm going I'm going like reaching out like this and feeling the same thing. So where is my sweet spot? And you want to get to feel, am I reaching with my wrist? Am I reaching with my elbows? And like, particularly in, in like this one, which is sort of a diagonal flying or a high pad on a horse kind of thing. A lot of people, they, they try to do it with their shoulder and you can feel like it, you can feel the tension in the shoulder when you do that. If you're doing it correctly, you're reaching with the wrist, your shoulder should not feel anything it should it, it, it's it's i mean it's there it's participating but there's not going to be any kind of kink there. there's no resistance there you know, going the other direction it's like boom you're going ah you're feeling you set the elbow you reach with the wrist the fingers and you open up there and feel that say oh okay where where is my sweet spot you know, where can I where can I issue energy from this place that will give the maximum effect? And uh, we're working from the inside out. So we're not looking to like create the effect and how did I get there? It's more how do I get there and then we'll measure the effect. So with that, um, this is just like one tool we have. The idea is that if I learn the way to move correctly, and by correctly, I mean that you're able to deliberately and quickly, smoothly, effortlessly find those sweet spots. Find the way that your body moves in a graceful and powerful way, then you the resistance that you encounter with life, the driving with your hand with the handbrake on, with the, you know the bumps and, 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 and sharp edges of, uh, of life are not impinging on you with the same degree of intensity whenever you get into that way wu way state. And so I talked before about you start off very small and just get the feeling of what that feels like to move in way wu way and then you get then we build up from there to become more and more complex. And you can even add to that more and more powerful because the tendency is that whenever we have a something, a resistance that seems to be formidable, we, we bear down and we try to, we try to, try to uh, muscle through it. And that takes us in a different direction. So if you can learn to Oh, I don't need all that, that 
uh, struggle to make things happen. I can create effort with no counter effort so that, oh, I can just, I can just reach out and, and make stuff happen. And so then that takes you bigger and bigger and bigger into more and more deeper into your Kung Fu. Um, any questions, thoughts? You're pointing to something. Somebody's pointing. Wait, Scott. It was actually me. I've had my hand up for 10 minutes, but I love uh, listening to you. So I just like was waiting. <laughs> Is he done? I guess he's done. Uh, I just wanted we'll to say. You, Keith. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say that uh, really great class, and I'm really I'm loving the direction you're going here. It's really. Oh, great! Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. Sure. Cool, Keith. What do you What do you have to say? Okay, again, and hopefully you guys can appreciate. You're getting my perspective from someone that doesn't know anything, but that not only the physical exercise, which gave me uh, a buzz, I mean, literally, uh, your ability to just, just like talk us through there, talk us through and, and get us to the right mindset. You know, it doesn't matter, you're my relative. You know, that was really very substantial for me, you know, because I got to tell you, I'm like just trying to figure my way in the door and it's few and far between. But when I get those, just those, you know, five seconds of buzz, that's the five seconds of buzz that makes me climb into you, dude. Well, uh, thank you, Keith. Uh, you've jumped onto a moving train, Keith. And, uh, and uh, kudos to you for, uh, for keeping up, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not easy because this is this is advanced stuff. All the stuff we're talking about here is advanced stuff. So, uh, good job on that. Uh, way to keep keep after it, Dennis. Yeah, um, I'll add what you say is everything here is true. I, you know, after returning to class after a year and a half break, you know, I, you know, I was well, I was rusty on the form, but everything I learned in class is really, I, it really surprised me how much it up my up my game. You know, once I, the form fell back into place, just using the tips, things I've learned here, using my elbows, my fingers in polarity, it's just, it's just really up my game. And the things you were talking about tonight, it's just, you know, I, I you explained it better than I, I could explain it, but it, it does, it brings you to another level. And, um, you know, I, I'm really thankful for this class. I, I, I'm surprised that after being out, out of, class for a year and a half how much more i've learned and how much a, a different level i'm at even my teachers have commented you know he saw me i was doing a, a you know i was in a, a single whip pose and he said jesus it looks like you're doing a standing meditation he mentioned you by name he said he said that I, he could tell i've been working with you, <laughs> you <know? laughs> so That's i good. mean it's it's, uh, it's really good stuff i want to thank you Great. Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Sam. Yes. Uh, thanks again, Rick. Uh, you show me how I could do it by myself, because that's the way usually it works out. Um, doing it by myself. This is another way. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Jonathan. This is definitely Rick Appreciation Night. I want to uh, <laughs> well, I was going to say, I let's all it. Sing. I can handle it. It's okay. It's okay. Let's all sing. <laughs> You're a jolly good fellow. Yeah. <laughs> so, just like we were talking earlier with the ball of the foot, it was like ten years on on that. Once once we hit on that, this elbow thing, it, it's the foundation of from the elbow to the hand because the the arm is out here. And it's like the foot's for the body. And I know it's all kind of connected system. The ball of the foot goes to the finger, but this is its own other foundation as like the second foundation, it seems to me, that parallels with the ball of the foot. 
because everything happens from this. If this is, is not set right, nothing's going to happen. And yet I could spend my entire day at my desk, at my study, doing things, going on to whatever I'm doing. And just, just by accessing my elbows, wow, how much tension is dropping out of me throughout the day. This is like a real infinite game. This is not about your hour or 20 minutes of Tai Chi. This is really like Rick is saying, a thousand times a day. That's not an exaggerated number. Don't have to count, <laughs> but it's like all yes. day, right? Me, These foundations. I when I can't <laughs> sleep and I don't, I'm kind of sore. I'm standing next to my bed in a position. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Oh man. Okay. okay. Well, thank you all so much. This is really, I really appreciate the, uh, uh, the good thoughts and, uh, and I'm so happy that uh, this stuff is making sense and uh, it's coming across in ways that, uh, you know, uh, are, are useful to you guys. So uh, thank you all so much. Well, you may be like overstating the fact that it makes sense to me anyway, <laughs> but I'm, I'm digging it nevertheless. Okay, it's diggable. Even if it doesn't make sense, it's diggable. Terrific. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Yes. I love happy you all. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. I love you, Maria. <laughs> <laughs>